and but having a LinkedIn online presence is really gonna you know take you the extra mile. So I promise you this won't be your average LinkedIn uh, workshops and it definitely will not be the snoozer. But before I begin, curious to know by show of hands or on the chat, who is competing this year in Show Hacks? Okay, got a couple hands going up. Cool, sounds good. Love to see it. So, and follow up question to that raise your hand or comment in the chat if you have a LinkedIn profile, just so I could get a feel for the audience. All right, a couple of people going up. Nice, awesome. So, you know, throughout this call, feel free to be engaging, feel free to use the chat, feel free to turn on your camera, we'd love to see some faces. And, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to drop it in the chat. So moving on to our agenda, over the next 40 minutes or so, we're gonna be discussing some of the key tips about LinkedIn and some of the basic stuff. However, if you're that person that feels you already have a detailed profile, you already have everything in line, congrats, that's a huge milestone. We're gonna be going over some tips and tricks on what I like to call beyond the profile. You know, how to become a power user, how to reach out to recruiters, how to apply for these top-notch jobs that I believe I just heard someone talking about. So we're gonna be um, discussing some of that. Honestly, to be really frank with you guys, there's just so much that, one could leverage on LinkedIn. So it's kind of going to be tough to cram everything with with our time. So I'll try to breeze uh, through everything as quickly as I can. And if anyone has any questions, as I mentioned, we could budget some time at the end for Q&A and I would be happy to answer. If that sounds all right with everyone. Cool. So, you know, when you think about social media in comparison to LinkedIn, you can kind of see a difference. I don't need to tell you what all of these other social media platforms are. You already know it. I always like to start with this slide because it just goes to show you how LinkedIn is very different from your TikToks, from your Instagrams, from your Snapchats, because LinkedIn is the world's largest professional network. And as the world's largest professional network, you being on the platform, want to match that professional gravitas that it has, that professional respect uh, that it has. So, you know, as it's the, as it's the largest LinkedIn, as it's the largest professional network um, on the face of planet Earth, does that mean that you always have to be professional on it? No, not really, but should you be the subset of the human being in a professional manner? Yes, you should. So I think at the end of the day, we're all human beings and we're all trying to be successful uh, as the ultimate goal. So um, just keep that in mind. You don't always have to be top notch 100% when it comes to LinkedIn. Recruiters understand and professionals understand that you guys are human and you guys are trying to um, find extra opportunities. So Definitely, you know, take that time to really sharpen up not only on your professional skills, but also personally. There's not a reason why you always have to be professional on LinkedIn. So when it comes to developing a professional mindset, obviously, what do we think about? We think about experiences that we may have gained in past jobs or internships. We think about experiences that we can, we may have gained in doing past projects or different goals that we have or different visions that we have. So that's some of the ideas uh, that you could implement when it comes to using the LinkedIn platform, keeping it more on the professional side, but also being a human about it and being, you know, being yourself at the end of the day. So at LinkedIn, we are a very vision and mission oriented organization. Our vision is to create economic opportunity for every member in the global uh, in the global workforce. And we have 706 million members and counting. Every second, we're getting approximately three members added onto our platform. 
But that just that just goes to show you a little bit about LinkedIn's growth and impact of what it has right now on an international level. And you know, when you think about the 30 million companies it has worldwide, that just could that really goes to show you how if you are thinking about staying in the US, fantastic. However, maybe after graduation, you want to go to another country or back to your home country. You just want to travel and seek opportunities elsewhere. There's a strong chance that LinkedIn has a strong rep representation in that country. So that just gets, goes to show you a little bit about, you know, the uh, reach that LinkedIn has. Well, those are just some of the some of these stats. And I know some of us love TikTok. We love IG. And we're all about other social media platforms. But I think right now for anyone that's seeking opportunities, especially in this time of social distancing and COVID, the most important platform that's going to provide opportunities for you and help you become a power user and help you find a J-O-B is LinkedIn. It's going to help you get that paper, which we're all seeking at the end of the, at the, end of the day, that, that salary and cash flow. So from an employer journey and employer perspective, you know, LinkedIn is great, especially if you want to climb the corporate ladder. I know many of us are studying CS or IT. So with that, we may already have in mind that we want to work for a top corporate company or a top technological company. When it comes to that, having a LinkedIn is basically a must if you want to work for a top dog. But at the same time, if you're aiming for a more entrepreneurship uh, point of view, if you want to launch your own company, or perhaps you want to help grow a startup or small business, LinkedIn is also the place for that. And normally it really falls into two buckets when you're finding different opportunities, the formal bucket or the informal bucket. So what do I mean by that? You know, when it comes to the formal bucket, that's you just finding and applying to jobs and networking with recruiters or connecting with recruiters and outreaching to them. So it's kind of like you meeting them. When it comes to the informal bucket, that could kind of go a little bit of different ways. Usually, if you have LinkedIn, you may get you may have gotten some in mails in the past where recruiters have actually reached out to you or people have actually reached out to you and asked you if you're open to opportunities where you want to grow or develop some certain skill. And that's kind of where the informal methodology comes into place, where you're really, you know, networking with someone who found you versus you reaching out to them. So from an employer's journey, 95% of Fortune 500 companies currently use LinkedIn. Wow, for all my people out there that want to work for top dot companies, that's definitely something to keep in mind. The other stat that I wanted to mention was 70% of people that were hired at a company uh, knew someone in that company. So, you know, I always enjoy the famous saying, it's not what you know, but who you know, and also how you know. So when it comes to the how you know part, LinkedIn really bridges that gap and, and will help you network with different people you may want to uh, build a relationship with to get that job, to get that internship, or whatever opportunity you may be seeking. So we're gonna be discussing a little bit about the profile. And I think when we talk about the basics of LinkedIn, it obviously starts with having a key profile. Um, so such as education or having a great photo or, or you know, highlighting or quantifying your experiences. And, scale. So some of these may sound a little self-explanatory um, as it's very similar to, you know, your resume. And I'm going to be getting into some of the differences of that. All right, moving on. So, you know, when it comes to time in life and in business, you know, time is certainly of the essence. And I think I'm going to go ahead and speak for everyone or most people here, but I don't know where this thing that everyone has a lot of time is coming from because I know many of us are busy, you know, sp speaking more specifically for me, do I travel? 
No, not really. But do I have a lot of meetings? Uh, sometimes. So when it comes to, you know, prioritization and basic agenda skills and, you know, basic management of your day to day, that's very important. You guys all have lives. You guys all have friends, family and different side goals you're working on. However, if you haven't already thought of it, and I'm sure many of you have, I think one thing that should be implemented when it comes to your time management skills is investing in yourself. So when it comes to investing in yourself, you guys are obviously at the right place with such an amazing organization such as UPE. Um, when it comes to investing in yourself, obviously that's basic interview etiquette, resume help. And I think you guys could kind of see where I'm going with this in terms of LinkedIn. So definitely take the time to, you know, leverage LinkedIn, go, you know, go network with different recruiters or apply for you know, a different amount of jobs each week. And then this could be a one to two hour thing that you could do each week. And I think when you, in anything, what you put in is what you get out. So if you're gonna put in maybe 15 minutes a week, you may not see a lot of results from LinkedIn. Or if you're gonna put in three hours a week on LinkedIn, then you may see, you know, you may get some feedback and you may see some uh, goals accomplished that you had for yourself. So I think, as I mentioned, what you put in in anything is definitely what you get out. So when it comes to having a LinkedIn profile and a resume, I think this is where a lot of people fall for the trap in terms of just basically saying the same thing as they have it already on the resume and just basically transporting it onto their profile. In fact, I still have to make that change on my profile because I, I still think it's very 100% similar. But you know, when it comes to your LinkedIn profile and your resume, it's really both for both living, breathing documents and your LinkedIn and profile should basically marry each other in terms of having a 99% similarity rate. But when it comes to your LinkedIn, it basically is there to help you tell your story. It's an aggregate of data, meaning it could be endless and it's designed to be endless because, you know, many of you may have endless experience at such a young age in your student career that you can't put all that experiences on your resume just because it needs to be one or two pages. So when it also comes to LinkedIn, you know, one of the key differences be between your LinkedIn and resume is many of us tend to put bullet points on our resume and do the same thing on LinkedIn. Whereas having a LinkedIn should really be there to tell your story, highlight your accomplishments, and more so a storytelling manner, such as a paragraph. Whereas on your resume, it just may be basic bullet points. So I think if you guys could try to figure out a way on how to tell your story in a grasping manner to whoever may visit your profile, that's gonna set you apart from a lot of the competition. Because, you know, as I mentioned, many people do fall for that trap about having their LinkedIn profile very similar to their resume. And if you could kind of make a differentiate, you know, have a bunch of differentiators between your LinkedIn and profiles, then what happens is when you do apply for a job, the recruiter is gonna notice that there's extra meat on your LinkedIn and on your resume that's, you know, extra feedback and insights for them. So basically highlighting your stories on your resume is gonna really set you apart at the end of the day as well. All right, so moving on, step number one, add a photo. I pray and hope, I don't really have to tell this to anyone, but yes, definitely have a picture uh, on this. And we recommend a photo that really represents you uniquely. Um, you know, I, I did mention that LinkedIn is good for you to resonate with in terms of having a professional gravitas. But, you know, if you wanna be casual about it or if you don't wanna be in a suit and a tie, although that is recommended, for job seekers, I know many of us are looking for our next internship or opportunity. I would recommend uh, business casual or professional. But you know, if you think you already have a, a job that you wanna stay at and you think it's the right fit, then maybe it could be a casual look that this guy has. He's not really in a business 
uh, attire. He's kind of just casual. And I think that's also fine. And, and I think that goes back to what I was saying is be yourself on the platform, but still maintain that level of professionalism. When it comes to the picture, I think you guys could use your own discernment to figure out what's right and what's wrong to put as your photo versus, you know, what you would add on Instagram, TikTok, or the other platforms. Um, so profiles with a photo get 20 times percent more views than uh, profiles that do not have any photos. So that just goes to show the magnitude of, you know, having a good profile. And we usually recommend from the shoulders up. Um, if you don't really have a software where you could edit it or make it more, you know, make it more crystal clear, LinkedIn luckily does have tools that when you are inputting a profile, you could kind of edit it a little bit and make it to your liking. So for example, I think this fellow here used a black and white filter. So that's just an example of the different features that LinkedIn has, but I'll let you guys play around with it a little bit. And then when it comes to your education, I think this part is pretty much self-explanatory. We're all students. We all know the importance of our degrees. However, we want to make sure that we're not leaving anything out. And what do I mean by that? Obviously, we want to put our degrees, both associates and bachelors if we're two-year transfers. And we can't also forget different certificates that we may be adding on to our degrees. That's also important. And I think if we add our certificates, that's going to show whoever's looking at your profile that you are taking the extra step to add different courses to your education development. But also, when you think about you know, your time at FIU or your time in the university, what else can be added? Did you do study abroad? Did you get any scholarships? Did you, or were you selected from a pool of 500 to enter a type of program or selected from a pool of 1,000 for such and such, maybe Bill Gates scholarship, I'm just thinking off the top of my head. Those are all things that you would put under your education as well. So as I mentioned, that's pretty much self-explanatory, but if you have done any other notable things during your time as a student, definitely feel free to add it under the education uh, section. As far as clubs such as UPE, depending on you know your level of involvement here, I would recommend putting that in the experience section, which I'll get to in a section in, in a second. If not, there's another place for you to put it, which I'll also I'll get to in a second. So work experience, here we go. And I want to highlight that it's important to put any and all work that you have done. I think right now with many people unemployed and COVID just changing things forever as we know and unemployment not seen since quite frankly the Great Depression, it's, it, it will do you better if you put you know everything that you have done. And don't be, you know, don't be embarrassed or ashamed if, you know, it, it, it's like a very, if you think it's a very basic job or um, if, if it's your first job, such as like a bag boy. Um, I have my first job there and I, it, it was actually a dishwashing job. And I think when you put that, it really goes to show your nobility and your will to have hard work ethic. And professionals really resonate with that because at the end of the day, we all started somewhere and where we start is not necessarily where we end. So that's that's completely okay to put any type of job or work experience that you have, even though you feel that it may be it may not be as impactful. Believe me, any experience is good experience. So when it comes to you know putting your experience on your LinkedIn, as I mentioned, you want to be able to share your story such as some of the tasks that you were given or some of the projects that you were given and kind of tell the story as you would in an interview. I'm sure many of you have heard of the star format, situation, task, action, result. If you want to walk uh, the viewer through, through that process of said experience that you have, we recommend that. And of course, a paragraph form, as you see on this example. Um, as well as adding any stats or numbers. Uh, for me, I, I'm more tailored to business and I work in sales. So 
I would put increased sales by 30% or 40%. Um, I'm not too sure how you guys would quantify it from a technological standpoint, because I know many of you are studying IT and CS, but if you can add data while telling stories, that's going to look really good because a lot of professionals uh, cater towards numbers because many times in the professional world, um, numbers are going to be the goal that any company wants to reach a certain set of numbers or a certain set of projects that um, they're looking to accomplish. So if you could kind of tailor your LinkedIn profile in a storytelling fashion to highlight any numbers or data points, all the better for you. And then volunteer experience. We can't forget about giving back to our community. And just like having the first job there, it really goes to show your nobility and you know your will to have a hard work ethic. So as it says here, hiring managers really value volunteer experiences. And when it comes to volunteer experiences, you know, it could be even if it was a day uh, feeding South Florida, or if you took a two weeks mission, mission trip to a third world country, that's completely fine. As long as you show that you're willing to give back to the community in some type of way. I know it may be kind of hard now with things still reopening and a lockdown still happening, but if you could find a way to add some type of volunteer experience, definitely do. And if not, uh, look forward to signing up or trying to get involved with your community. That's definitely key. Because at the end of the day, many corporate companies, they do have special programs for their employees where they take two to three days and they spend those two to three days just on giving back to the community. So if you could you know, resonate that you match that value, they're more likely to hire you as well. It's a like a little cherry on top. I know it may not weigh a lot, but you know, the more the better for you. All right, when it comes to skills, skills are very important. I think many of you may already have leveraged the job tab on LinkedIn and or a job a job application in general. And what's one of the things that you may see on that application? the list of requirements and the list of skills that they're looking for. So really making sure that you have the top soft skills and hard skills that you feel you're most confident you resonate with um, will go the extra mile for you as well. Um, I think on LinkedIn, I don't know the number off the top of my head, but I think, and I'm pretty confident that the max amount of skills that you can have is 50 skills. So that really falls on your plate to understand what skill gaps do I have where I can improve upon? What skills am I good at? And what can I, what, which ones can I add to my top 50? So the more the better, as I said, I, I, I would aim that you guys have all 50 skills on there. Uh, you never know who may look at your profile and you may never know what hiring manager is in need of Java or Adobe or basic leadership skills. And if they see that on your profile and you have applied for that job, and that's one of the requirements, um, odds are you may be getting a call for in types of interviews. Additionally, I do wanna add that endorsing skills is very important. So I challenge you guys here, if you guys are not already connected with each other, definitely take the time to connect with each other and not only connect with each other, engage. Engage by endorsing each other for skills. Um, like I said, you know, the more skills you have, the better, but the more endorsements you have, you know, that also adds that, you know, reputable status that you have as an online brand or on LinkedIn. All right. And then the most important part of LinkedIn is definitely going to be the summary. This is basically like a declarative statement of, yo, this is who I am. This is what I do. So I think having a summary at the top of your profile in a first person translation is what we recommend. As I mentioned, LinkedIn is all about telling your story, who you are. 
So when we think of summary, it's very similar to your common elevator pitch. For example, when the hiring manager or recruiter tells you, tell me about yourself. That's kind of what you're going to want to put on your profile. Basically, in, you know, when you're giving your elevator pitch, we already know it's 40 to 60 seconds. So when it comes to your summary, it could be maybe a paragraph to two paragraphs max, you know, really highlighting who I am, what I want, why I'm on the platform, and different goals that I may have. And, you know, I think when it comes to having an elevator pitch and drafting a summary in general, it's really important to know your own ambition levels. And I think the top questions to ask when it comes to ambition is, what's my vision? Number one, um, what do I want to do to get there? Number two, and three, what's the price I want to pay to get to that level? So really keep those three questions in mind when it comes to ambition in general and, and really highlighting what you want out of your, you know, career once you do graduate and you do get a job. Um, my mentor always told me, always plan for the step ahead of your next step. So for example, if you already know you have, if you already know you have a full-time job and you already know the position, already be planning for the position after that. So that way you're always a step, of the, a step ahead of the competition and a step ahead of the game. I think that's where true vision and ambition comes in. All right. So when it comes to your network, uh, I always enjoy the famous quote, your network is your net worth. And I think on LinkedIn and obviously the only way to grow your network is by connecting with people, professionals, colleagues, and not many of us as students may know a lot of people on LinkedIn. And so I think if you want to, you know, build relationships with other people, LinkedIn is very known for people reaching out. That's kind of like one of the golden rules. It's kind of almost expected that when you connect with someone, you send them a little thoughtful note on who you are, how you came across their profile, and why you are reaching out to that person. Um, I think if you do that, that person is A, more likely to connect with you back, and B, uh, more likely to build a relationship with you moving forward. So it's all about expanding your network uh, on LinkedIn. And uh, I know many of us may not like to check LinkedIn as often as we should, but one key tip that I did want to mention somewhere in this presentation, and I guess I'll do it now, is don't wait until your last semester to start using LinkedIn and to start uh, networking and building relationships because all that, you know, really takes time and, you know, it, it, it will really help you in the long run if you do handle that earlier, earlier on um, in your FIU or student career. And you'll see the impact of, you know, having a strong network as you advance in your um, career section. I think I'm halfway done with my presentation. I just want to take a quick pulse check. Do we have any questions or um, does anyone want any clarification on anything I discussed so far? If not, I'll keep moving on. All right, beautiful. I will keep moving on. So when it comes to reaching out to different people that you do connect with, you know, definitely uh, reaching out, as I mentioned, is the norm. But one of, the, one of the key norms about LinkedIn is asking for informational interviews. I know many of us are looking for our next play and informational interviews are definitely a must for students. I know I've done a couple before joining LinkedIn and other companies. Um, and I advise you to because sometimes the reviews um, on Glassdoor, if you're looking at different positions, may not be accurate or you know, obviously your recruiter is going to give you a lot of feedback and hiring manager is going to give you a lot of feedback on what the role entails of. However, I'd argue that you want to take it a step even deeper and connect with someone who already has that position 
uh, to understand their day to day, to kind of ask for a little job shadow, to kind of pick their mind on what they like, what they don't like. What are the roses and thorns of your positions? And I think if you do that, you'll have a 360 view of if this role is really for you and if you should apply or continue or accept the offer. So informational interviews, uh, they're very short, sweet, simple to the point. And, you know, more than likely, they're going to say yes. And I say that because nowadays, everyone wants to be a mentor. Everyone wants to be a thought leader. Everyone wants to give back. Uh, so, you know, they're more likely to say yes if you keep it, you know, polite, kind, sweet, and short to the point, asking for 15 minutes to 30 minutes on their calendar. So I went ahead and, you know, added a little example here. And if you guys want to take a second to take a picture of this so you could get a better idea of how to structure your thoughts when you are reaching out for informational interviews, that's definitely key. All right, moving on to the next one. And then referrals, requesting referrals. So once you've already hosted a lot of informational interviews, you've already established trust with different employees in the companies, and you've already built relationships. I think the logical next step is, you know, you've already applied, you've already built relationships. I think it's okay at this point to ask for referrals or ask for any um, contacts of key decision makers when it comes to the, the opportunity of your candidacy for the role. I think that a big thing that you never want to do is just message them right out the gate and straight up ask for something without building trust or getting to know the person first. Um, I didn't mention that many people are willing to help, but you always want to build and, you know, break the ice and have a little small talk with them before getting to your ultimate goal of requesting for referrals. So what do I mean? Don't ever just, you know, message people and be like, hey, do you have a job? Or, hey, do you know if you could get me into this opening? Unless you really know that person, then that's completely okay. But if it's some complete stranger or some random person that works for the company, uh, I would highly advise not to do that. So again, when it comes to referrals, sweet, short, and to the point. And then when it actually comes to applying for the job, uh, if you remember on the second slide, 30 million companies currently use LinkedIn to post their job opportunities. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a heck of a lot of companies to me. Um, so, you know, with that, it's about your initiative and, you know, your time management. How many hours a week do I want to dedicate to apply for jobs, to network with recruiters and professionals and set up informational interviews on this type of job that was posted. Um, so it, it's really the ball is on your court, as with anything, especially with the job tab. And as I mentioned, LinkedIn, 30 million companies, you know, millions of jobs each month. And LinkedIn right now uh, is the top place for companies to post jobs other than you know the regular uh, websites such as your Monster, such as your Indeed, such as your Handshake, which those are still good. I'm not saying still don't look at those other websites. However, if you are looking for more of a speedy process or you wanna get straight to the point and narrow down your search, LinkedIn is gonna help you save time and it's gonna speed up the process for you know your job search or internship search. And then I love this. One of the great things that LinkedIn recently just launched, and many of you may have seen this, is the open to work feature. And that really helps the recruiter, or hiring manager, or whoever stumbles upon your profile really know that, okay, this guy is open to work. Let me reach out to him and see if he's interested in working in X, Y, or Z. So if you don't already have that and you are in the market for a job search, that's kind of like having a profile picture on your LinkedIn. It's a must. It's basically, there's no other way to say that. It's like you you pretty much have to have that on there um, because that's just gonna make your search time 
so much faster and it's gonna you know decrease headaches in your job search so definitely let recruiters know that you are open to work all right and i think my slide is phrasing it's not letting me go to the next slide so yep I had a feeling this would happen um and this is a this is a good example to always test your technology uh especially during virtual interviews or virtual presentations um gabby is my slide still on the open to work slide yeah all right i think i'm gonna have to because it's giving me the wheel of death right now oh no yeah okay. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to pull up my presentation again, but okay. consider this a little two to three minute break <laughs> while I almost finish up. But let me stop sharing real quick. Come on, Microsoft, you know, you would think I work at a tech company and it's giving me a wheel of death. All right, so we're gonna transition to Google Slides. All right. <clears throat> and Gabby, we're still okay on time? Yeah, you're good. Cool. So I got my PowerPoint pulled up. Let me share my screen again. That was a little cool unofficial halftime we took. Where's Google? No, Safari. There we go. Okay. Technical difficulties. Zo hashtag Zoom problems. <laughs> okay. I think I got it. In the meantime, um, everyone can throw in their LinkedIn's in the chat if you guys already have one. Yeah, please feel free to connect with each other and endorse each other for skills. Um, now would be the time to do so. Okay, um, one more minute and then we should be good. No problem. All right, now can everyone see that cool sunset? Yeah. Awesome. Present. Okay. So half time is over. Hope everyone got a chance to stretch and get some water or take your uh, hourly exercises. But going back into it. So when it comes to influencers, industries and companies, you know, similar to different social media platforms, LinkedIn is obviously gonna have their own version of that. Whereas on TikTok, you may have the famous dancer or the famous jokester. On LinkedIn, it's going to be, you know, your influencers will be authors, your influencers are going to be industry leaders or experts in different companies or CEOs. Um, I'll just name a few names here, you know, Musk or Gates or um, Bezos. So, you know, you guys already know that that's kind of self-explanatory. However, I want to pinpoint it more narrow down to what you guys specialize in. And, you know, for each industry, as LinkedIn being the top professional network on 
the face of planet Earth, each industry is going to have their own insiders on different topics. So if you're studying uh, Internet of Things or uh, computer science, odds are there's going to be thought leaders on LinkedIn that could really help you with your search and can really give you ideas on what that industry entails of or, you know, different ideas of what the different jobs and the many in the many you know positions there are within a, te a different technological company so definitely follow uh influencers companies and then news is a big one um a lot of times you know we always look at linkedin just to see what's up with their friends or what opportunities they have recently gotten however if you follow different you know news sites you could really see what's going on uh within each company so let's say you're looking or a job at Salesforce. Salesforce could, you know, release a news article that say that says they're hiring 16,000 new employees. And then you could click on that article and you could see that they're hiring a thousand employees in the subject that you're proficient on. So that's just one example of the benefits of, you know, following the news on LinkedIn and influencers, of course. And then I love this slide. This slide is probably my favorite uh, in the whole deck. Becoming a power user of LinkedIn and really engaging with the platform. I think you can't become a power user without developing content. So some of the content strategies that you know could come about or that you could and should be doing is, you know, besides just leaving a like or commenting congrats on on some someone's post. I think many times on LinkedIn, we usually go just to do that. Um, however, there's just so much more that you guys could be leveraging, such as publishing articles or publishing um, thoughtful posts and you know, trying to climb the ladder of uh, being a thought leader or posting videos. And some people may think that when I say publishing an article or posting a video as an extra homework assignment, not really. I'm really mean like 100 to 200 words on some topic that you're proficient at. It could be Java. It could be Adobe. It could be some you guys know better than I do. Um, but really pinpoint what are your strengths and really focus on three things from there. Um, it could be, you know, three to four posts a week and one article per month. And as far as videos, you know, I think it's kind of hard to uh, post videos now because there's not really any events uh, that are going on. The example I always like to use is your common career fair. A lot of people are really kind of borderline timid about posting videos on LinkedIn, but when it comes to TikTok and Instagram, they have no problem, which I kind of don't see it because it's basically the same thing you're putting yourself out there. However, on LinkedIn, you're having a professional demeanor and gravitas. Um, so maybe when the world opens back up again and career fairs do happen, you could kind of film a one to two minute video of you explain what happened at that career fair. And I think, you know, the point is adding more value and engaging with your network. We kn already know how these social media uh, networks work. They work off, you know, algorithms and machine learning, meaning the more you engage uh, with the platform, the more visible you are to different people and the more likely you are able to grow connections and to you know expand and get more followers um i think a good example is let's say you and someone else are competing for the same job and you both are uh you both are already connected with a hiring manager or recruiter if you're posting more than the other person and it's between you and joe for example Odds are, since Joe's not posting a lot, visibility is not really gonna be shown to the hiring manager who's on LinkedIn uh, for, let's say, three hours a week. But you are, because you are actively engaging with the platform. So really engage with uh, LinkedIn as much as you can. And if you're struggling to think of something, don't overthink it. You know, it really goes back to me saying, Pick three things that you're proficient at and really, you know, narrow it down from there. And I, I think it's also good that, you know, you bring your authentic self to the platform. Um, obviously, that's kind of like common sense. 
but it's always a good reminder to mention that and also engage with people if someone comments on your post show them some love back they took the time to comment on your post and say congrats or great thoughts then go ahead and thank them uh, for that and and move on from there um that's also engaging with them and i think if you do that it's going to inspire that person to also develop content and be their own uh thought leader and creator on the platform just as the other platforms as facebook instagram and yada 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 but uh, definitely become a power user of the platform and then linkedin learning this is you know so huge to already add to the education you're gaining here at upe your classes your different internships that you're getting i think there's over 16,000 courses on linkedin and 2,000 of them mainly focus on technological processes and features such as uh, topics that you guys would benefit from. And I do have a list that I sent to Gabby. So maybe at the end, if you would like that list of different topics, um, you could feel free to reach out to me. I'll drop my contact information at the end. Or Gabby, we would be happy to share that list of courses with you. Um, but LinkedIn learning is definitely key. And it kind of goes back to the job application, the requirement section. For example, if you see a skill that's not on that job application, you may wanna take a LinkedIn learning course to get certified on that skill. And what's beautiful about it is you do get certified and it does show up on your LinkedIn uh, profile. So the recruiter will be able to see that and you'll be more likely to get that opportunity in the long run. So LinkedIn Learning is huge. It's free for FIU students. If you are at a different institution, um, I'm not sure if it may be free. However, in the time of COVID, we have unlocked some free learning paths. So this is a good website to go to and you could see the different free online courses that we do offer. And it's gonna really help you um, develop your soft skills and hard skills. Um, but I know for a fact, uh, us Panthers do have LinkedIn Learning for free. So if you're not already on LinkedIn Learning, uh, definitely take advantage of it. I remember when COVID hit and um, a lot of us were very uh, hyped up with the show Tiger King. And I did some research on that. And it turns out that uh, the whole series took seven hours to complete. Seven hours. And I just want to make that note because your average LinkedIn learning course takes an hour, maybe an hour and a half. So, you know, if you could binge watch, I want us to substitute binge watching for binge learning. Not saying let's disregard all entertainment. I love being entertained. I love movies and shows. Um, but if we could add some LinkedIn learning to our uh, weekly agenda, that's all the better. And I'm always one who. Um, is all about always be learning. I think that's one of the tags that we really embrace at LinkedIn because continuous learning is really going to help you step outside of your comfort zone. Because remember, comfort zone is an, is an amazing place, but nothing will ever grow there. So these are some cool um, topics that you guys could get for free if you already don't have LinkedIn learning for free. And then the top most in-demand skills, 2019, but I'm pretty sure they're pretty similar for this year as well. Um, creativity, persuasion, collaboration, adaptability, time management. Pretty self-explanatory there. However, one that I think it's on the 2020 map is resilience. Due to the fact that COVID has changed everything, uh, a lot of companies are looking for people that are resilient can take on extra ch challenges, can take on the unknown, can take on, you know, being in limbo um, because this has situation has basically put us all in limbo. And I think if you guys could all show a characteristic of resilience, that's going to be one of the top skills this next decade. So these are some resources um, that you guys could go to. And if you guys uh, Google them, um, you guys will be able to uh, go to the website, but I think what I'm going to do is I have a couple of infographics that we, me and Gabby can send via email follow-up. 
as well as some of these links. If that sounds all right, Gabby, if some of the uh, attendees were interested at looking at some of these resources. Awesome. Cool. So I think uh, we're coming close on time, and that was quite the roller coaster. Thank you guys so much for staying with me uh, through all that. Sorry for the little unofficial halftime. But um, if you have any questions, happy to answer. If not, I uh, would love to connect with you. And um, I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching or group coaching on LinkedIn. So please feel free to reach out on Instagram, email, or LinkedIn for that. But thank you guys so much and happy to take any questions from here.